What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I hope we're all well today. We will be continuing on with the series where I'm reviewing some of my older content and critiquing it to see if I still agree with what I said six years ago. If you haven't seen the chest video and the shoulder video, I suggest you watch that. But after you've watched this one, of course, today is all about back and what top five exercises I would choose right now at this point in time when it comes to back training. Now, the first exercise which I had on my list back in 2017 was the barbell bent over row. I was debating whether or not to get rid of it, mainly because of the isolation factor. As you are standing upright and bending over, you are engaging pretty much every muscle throughout your entire body just to keep yourself fixed in that position, which it's a good thing, but is it isolating your back? Mm, you could argue less and you could also say that a lot of people tend to cheat and perform this exercise incorrectly however i assume most of you are doing it correctly because you've been watching my videos for a long time so assuming that you can do that i'm going to keep it in because not only is it going to be working your upper back but also your core as well and your lower back so pretty much your entire posterior chain certainly waist upwards is getting trained a couple things to bear in mind is grip position of course i most of the time now will do an underhand grip why? Because as I can keep my elbow closer to my torso, I get more lat engagement. If I use a more pronated grip, my elbow flares, and it just means that there's less lat engagement, more upper back engagement. So realistically, we just need to decide which part of your back you want to isolate more. But it's certainly something you need to keep in mind when performing this exercise. If you do struggle with keeping your balance, your stability, or your lower back starts to give way before your upper back does, then you need to strengthen your lower back. Okay, so make that a priority. Get on the hyper extensions. The next exercise on the list is the lat pull down. Now this particular variation of a lat pull down, I would not keep in my top five, the wide grip pronated bar pull down. Reason behind that is it's not the most efficient when it comes to isolating your lats. And I would imagine if you're doing a lat pull down, the focus of the exercise is to grow your lats. I'll find, and a lot of other people will find, whenever you do this particular variation of a lat pull down, you'll notice that other muscle groups will tend to kick in and help when pulling the weight down. So muscles in your rotator cuffs, traps, rhomboids, bit of your rear delts, and even biceps. So yes, you're still training quite a lot of the muscles in your back, but it's not as good as it could be when it comes to lat isolation. So what I would do now, the majority of the time, whenever I'm doing a pull down, is I bring my elbow close to my torso. So it just means I need to either use an attachment or use a machine where I can pull the weight down and keep my elbow fixed close to my torso. Okay, it gets rid of other muscle groups taking over and it actually will help with increasing range of motion and allowing you to shorten the lat and get a good contraction at the bottom of the movement and train it in the full range. The next exercise on the list is the one arm dumbbell row. Now, this is a very good exercise, but again, I don't think it quite makes it to the top five. I certainly don't do it kneeling on a bench anymore. Uh, as you can see, it looks like I'm ramming the weight into my crotch area. The problem when you're leaning on a bench is you're just restricting the range of motion a little bit. So if I am doing this exercise, I would do it standing upright, leaning on a bench or just with something out in front of me. I would replace this one with any form of single arm rowing machine or cable. Ideally a machine with a chest support because you are fully locked in place and there is just no room for cheating. There's a lot of good machines, particularly here in Dubai, even around the world now, where the grip can change. I mean, you can twist it from using a pronated, neutral, and supinated grip, which is something you can't really do with the dumbbell. Okay, if you try and do a supinated one arm row with the dumbbell, you're just going to get a shocking range of motion. Which specific machine you use or grip you're going to use is completely dependent upon which area of your back which you want to work and the position that your elbow is going to end up in. Okay, if you do pronate grip, elbow flared, obviously you're going to work more of your upper back, rear delt and trap. If you bring your elbow in towards your torso and use more of a neutral and supinated grip, you're just going to get more lat engagement. So keep that in mind. The next exercise on the list is a cable pullover. 
Now I would probably keep this in the top five, or at least there would need to be some form of pullover motion as shown in my top five. It's a great movement to build your lats. So say for example, with myself, dumbbell pullover. I love that exercise with a passion because there is nothing that gives me a stretch at the bottom of the movement. Like it literally pulls my muscle fibers apart, which is good, but it's also a little bit dangerous and it's certainly more of an advanced movement to perform if you want to get it right. And you'll notice as you bring the weight over your head, on top of your torso, you're not really training the lat in the shortened range and it's really difficult to contract in that position. Now you also have the option of using a pullover machine. These are quite rare, although they're starting to become more common. And of course, people like Dorian Yates would swear by them, but these are very hit and miss. From my experience, a lot of the pullover machines are lacking a foot support and you need a foot support in order to create an opposing resistance and keep your back pressed up against the back pad. If you don't have a seat belt or a foot pad to press against, you'll notice that whenever you're doing the pullover motion with a significant amount of weight, your whole body's just gonna lift off the seat and then the whole movement just becomes a complete mess. So there's very few pullover machines, which I actually like. The cable variation seems to be the best approach for the majority of people, because it's not that hard to set up and it's relatively easy to execute. What I would say though, is I no longer use a bar. The problem with the bar is whenever you're gripping it, your elbows are gonna flare. And as I mentioned earlier on, if your elbows are flared, it's not optimal for isolating the lats. So you wanna keep your elbows as close to your torso as possible. So I would suggest replacing the bar with a rope. A standard rope would do, but if you could find the longer rope, that might be better for most people because it would just allow you to go through that very full range and bring both your hands either side of your torso so you can get a really good squeeze on the lats. The final exercise on my list is the rack deadlift. I would still argue this should be in most people's top five. It has advantages over the conventional deadlift because unlike the traditional deadlift where you're engaging quite a lot of your lower body, a rack deadlift basically takes your legs out of the equation and you're just kind of isolating your upper back. Not only will you be training your upper back, mid back, but more importantly, the lower back. Most people tend to neglect their lower back when they think of back training as a whole. And it's actually really important to train your lower back. If you don't train your lower back, then you will have a weak lower back and a weak core. And a weak core means that it's going to prevent you from lifting heavy when doing other compound movements. But the risk of injury is just much higher, not only from doing exercises in the gym, but even just day-to-day -day activities. It's important to have a strong core and a strong lower back. And this exercise will train just that. So I would keep it in the top five. For me personally, it's not in my top five. The reason behind that is I am incorporating quite a lot of Romanian deadlifts, heavy Romanian deadlifts when I'm training my glutes and my hamstrings. So I'm indirectly training my lower back as well at the same time. So I feel no need to do additional lower back training on top of that. I would take this out and I would replace it with the T-bar row. I feel like the T-bar row needs to have some form of a mention in this video. And particularly in recent years, it has been one of my go-to exercises. Reason behind that is just because of the chest support. So unlike the bent over barbell row, with the T-bar row, you don't have to worry about stabilizing your torso, worrying about keeping yourself in a fixed position. You don't have to worry about that. You can just completely take your core out of the equation and just focus on training your back until it literally reaches failure. So there we go, top five exercises for building a bigger back. Of course, the rear delts do make up the overall aesthetic of the back, but I have picked my top rear delt exercises in the shoulder video, so you've got to go and watch that video to see which exercises I have chosen. That is the video for today. Of course, make sure you check out the Thirst app, link in the description. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.